This year has been a tough one for cybersecurity, especially if you were one of the folks that got hacked. And even if you weren't, you might have been and you just don't know it yet. That happens. So let's take a look at what kinds of things have we seen, overall trends in the past year in cybersecurity. So we'll take a look back and then we'll take a look forward into the future. What can we look forward to in cybersecurity? Threats as well as hopefully good things that can occur. I think there will be a mixture of good news and bad news with both. So first of all, looking back, one of the things that continues to plague us is this notion of data breach. That is, the bad guys get into your system, they dump your customer database, they use it to mine for information that they can later use identity fraud scenarios with, they steal the secret sauce, the plans, this sort of stuff, and the business is compromised as a result. The IBM Poneman uh, survey that we run each year on the cost of a data breach shows that the cost of a data breach continues to be in excess of $4 million per incident. That has been the case for a number of years and it continues to be the case. We've got to do a better job on this. It's almost become so commonplace that we're numb to it and that can't be the case. What's the cause of a lot of these data breaches? Well, it turns out ransomware is at the core of many of them, not all, but many. And ransomware is costing people, individuals, all the way up to the large organizations and even nation states. As its effect is resulting in data loss, it's resulting in extortion, uh, a lot of bad things happen here. So those are a couple of bad trends that we see. How about something good? A little bit of good news for last year? I'll say multi-factor authentication is one. It's not a new idea, but the idea that I can authenticate, prove my identity to the system based upon something I know, something I have, and something I am, those three things, put all of those together or some combination, maybe even get rid of the something I know, the password. It's a better user experience and it can lead to better security. And what we've seen is more and more widespread adoption of multi-factor authentication. That's going to be a good thing for us all. And we've seen that start to take more hold uh, in the past year. Now, how about looking forward? What kind of things have, can we expect to see? Well, I'm going to say it's going to be a little bit of Groundhog Day. What we've seen in the past, we're going to keep seeing in the future until we learn how to solve these problems. Data breach, ransomware, multi-factor authentication, hopefully we'll continue to see more and more widespread use of that. So the past continues to play into the future and influence the future. But what are some other things that we'll see? I think we're gonna see uh, a rise in attacks for Internet of Things. Internet of Things or IoT is basically the notion, if you follow along with me, turn everything into a computer. Your car becomes a computer that takes you places. Your refrigerator is a computer that keeps your food cold. Your DVR is a computer that shows you movies. And in the IoT trend, everything becomes a computer. And what we know from cybersecurity is that every computer can be hacked. So if everything can be a computer and every computer can be hacked, all of a sudden everything can be hacked. Your car, your refrigerator, your insulin pump, your implantable defibrillator. These are things that are gonna be pretty scary when we start thinking about the whole world around us is potentially hackable. That's an, an area that we have got to give more attention to. Another one that could come back to haunt us is the use of artificial intelligence by the bad guys. On the positive side, we've had the good guys using AI for some number of years. We can use this to do a better job of security analysis, of root cause analysis, looking for what uh, all of these indicators of compromise ultimately mean and figuring out what we need to do. The good guys are using this to analyze and investigate. The bad guys, I think, are going to start using it more and more to do things like develop attacks that are specific to an AI. Uh, an, an artificial intelligence system would be able to maybe design new types of attacks to get into systems. It, we could also, as our businesses become more and more dependent upon artificial intelligence, we are dependent upon the corpus of knowledge that's in those systems. So therefore, 
if someone were able to poison the corpus of knowledge, then the AI would be giving advice and making decisions based on bad information. So that's a different type of AI-based attack. All of these go into what we refer to as adversarial AI. So there are a number of things that the bad guys could be doing where they're going to start using AI more, which just means the good guys are going to have to start using our AI more still. And another one that is very new and will continue to grow is the notion of a deep fake. That is an audio or video file where we have a, a person, maybe a well-known person, saying something that they never said. And we tend to believe what we see. And if it goes out on social media, everyone will believe it before anyone has a chance to refute it. Imagine what happens if a video is leaked on election day showing a candidate saying something that they never said that was terrible. It could be too late before we get the news cycle, the next news cycle, to correct the error. It could also move the stock market if we had a CEO seeming to say certain information that would look bad about the company and cause the stock to crash, even though they never said those words. But we have an AI that can do that sort of simulation. We're going to have to get smarter about how to detect a deep fake from an authentic video, as an example. Other things that we'll see, quantum computers are very useful in solving problems that traditional computers have not been able to do, to do simulations and things of that sort that we just don't have the computing capacity to, to process with a conventional computer. So a quantum system could solve those problems in record time. Also, a quantum system could potentially attack the cryptography that we have. The asymmetric crypto algorithms that we rely on every day for all of our secure communications could potentially be broken in what we thought would have taken decades or hundreds of years, now with a, a well-tuned quantum system in the future, maybe being able to be broken in a matter of minutes. So that means we're gonna have to do some good work to make quantum safe algorithms for cryptography. And the good news is we've got these things. In fact, the National Institute of Standards uh, recently this year came out with four algorithms that they published as being quantum safe. These are the algorithms that will protect against a quantum computer trying to crack our encrypted messages and databases and the like. And four of those algorithms that were accepted, of those four, Three of them, in fact, had IBM contributions to them. So we're very proud of our work that we've done in this space in trying to uh, protect people going forward into the future. And then another trend that has continued for a number of years and it shows no signs of letting up is a skills gap in cybersecurity. There's one website called cyberseek.org that says currently, as I look at the website, there are about 770 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs in the US alone. That's right now. And there's only about a million or so people working in the field. So it's almost one to one for every job. Now there uh, is an opening. And we can't make cybersecurity experts that quickly. With current technology, we can create a new human in about nine months. But if we're gonna turn them into a cybersecurity expert, it's gonna take a few more years. There's not anything that looks like we can suddenly start minting new cybersecurity experts to fill the gap. But we can do some things to help. And we can do things by working smarter, using AI that I mentioned here to guide our security efforts, using good tools to automate the responses that we have for security, uh, to do better analysis and become force multipliers for the people that we do have. Also, we need to do a lot more training for the people that are out there, not only our end users so that they don't put us in such a bad place to begin with, but also security professionals and create more security professionals. So it's gonna be a multi-pronged approach, but these are the things that I think we're gonna be able to see uh, both on the positive and the negative as we start looking forward to the future of cybersecurity.